welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle called Mountaineering by 99% Sneaky. Whenever I see the name 99% Sneaky, I always wonder what's, what, what, what makes up the 1% of 99% sneaky. Um, anyway, I think this is called mountaineering, I presume, because we've got sort of, it does look a bit like a mountain going up the grid. Um, and the, the only the only downside to this puzzle, which has an astonishingly high rating, it's been recommended a few times as well, and our testers really like it, is that it's disjoint subsets today, which is my absolute bet noir. So this is the rule that says that you can't in fact, actually, let's, we could use the two, six and four as examples. So you can see that the two here, if we look at this three by three box, it's sort of in the middle right hand position. And that means you can't have a two in any other middle right position in any other three by three box. In other words, those cells all have to be different. You can see that several of them are different, but these all have to be different as well. And the reason I find it difficult is I find scanning it impossible because I'm sort of used to a bit scanning the row, scanning the column, looking in the box. But here, we're also going to be required to look at those four squares to see whether they're, they've got, you know, they're repeating a two or not. Um, it's just very, very difficult for me, at least. Um, I think the testers are having a bit of a, a bit of a smile at my expense. Um, but I'll read you the rules to this one in a moment or two's time. Um, now, what, what did I want to tell? I wanted actually to do a little bit of an excursion during the introduction today and talk not about Sudoku, but about the world of advanced cryptic crosswords, because something has, something happened in this world, which has, uh, it's just tickled my fancy. And I keep thinking about it, but I've not been able to talk about it for the last few weeks because the puzzle that I want to talk about has been live, i.e. it's been, it's been, there's been a running competition, so I can't, but the, but today the solution has been published, so I can now talk about it. And, and the puzzle I want to talk about is, is called Dedication by Tiburon. Now, let me explain, let, in fact, let me put this up on the screen. Now, there is a bit of a backstory to this, and you'll have to bear with me. So let me talk first about what the listener crossword is. The listener crossword is, a pub, is, is, a, is an advanced cryptic crossword that's published every Saturday in the Times newspaper. It used to be published in the listener magazine. And the, the crosswords are very hard. They're always different. They always contain a preamble. And this is the preamble to this one. So you can see clues are given in alphabetical order of their answers, which must be entered where they will fit. So it already sounds horrible. Every clue has a letter misprinted in the definition. In normal grid order, grid order the corrections identify the dedicatees, two male, two female, and what links them while taking the nth letter of each clue, where n is the number of the grid entry, spells an instruction regarding submissions. So that is a great example of a listener crossword preamble. So this is not just a normal crossword. You have to do a lot of extra things. You've got to be quite a good solver because you're going to have to work out where all these misprints are, etc. And you've got to do lots of other things in order to work out the correct solution. And believe it or not, there is quite a big competition that runs all the time in terms of people's record on the listener crossword and for the last several decades those records have been maintained by a chap called John Green who lives in St Albans and so all the entries are sent to John Green and John Green hand marks them he hand marks every single grid of entries that he gets and if you make an error he will write down, so say I made an error, he would write Simon Anthony, you know, on this puzzle, he would write down exactly what your error was. And then at the end of the year, you can send off for your statistics, where John will send you basically your personal record of how you performed on all the listener crosswords for the previous year. And he does this for every single person who submits just a single entry, or, or you know, every single person who submits any puzzle can have a personal record sent to them. It is an astonishing labor of love that this man has been, has been performing for decades. Anyway, one thing I could, I, I know John, John is a friend of mine. Um, John has a couple of characteristics that I should let you know about. John is incredibly diligent, as you've no doubt gathered. He is also a stickler. 
So if you do something wrong, um, he tends to be fairly black and white about it. So um, I will give you an example about this. I once held the longest ever streak for correct listener crossword entries. It was several years long. My, my streak would have been a year longer had I not been marked wrong for uh, a puzzle in which at the end of the puzzle you had to uh, delineate uh, a copyright symbol that appeared in the grid. So you know what a copyright symbol looked like. It's a circle with a C inside it. And I shaded the cells that contained the circle and I shaded the cells that contained the C. So that was my copyright symbol. I was marked wrong for that because in John's view, the word delineate clearly required you to draw a line and not to shade the cells. Um, that hurt. That still hurts. That was over 20 years ago and it still hurts. Um, anyway, <laughs> long story, but I'm getting to the punchline. Anyway, so the, the, re the reason this puzzle that, that came out three, three weeks ago is interesting is it's by uh, the listener crossword editor, Shane Shabankare, um, who's also a friend of mine. And I will tell you what this puzzle requires you to do. So every clue has a letter misprinted in the definition. Well, the, the, what, what actually happens if you, if you work out those corrections correctly, you get four surnames. So you get the surname Redding, R-E-D-D-I-N-G, Grant, uh, Sawala, and Kaplinsky. Those are the four surnames that you get. And the what links them was date of birth. And the their date of birth, all, all four of those people, they're reasonably famous celebrities, Otis Redding, uh, Hugh Grant, uh, Natasha Kaplinsky, and Julia Sawala, that they're, they are all born on the 9th of September, which happens to be John Green's birthday. So the 9th of September this year was John Green's 75th birthday. Now this extra instruction that emerges from taking the nth letter of clues required the solver of the puzzle to send in a birthday card um, with the first names of these celebrities uh, not the grid. And the interesting thing about that is, so, so to correctly complete this puzzle, you had to send John Green a birthday card con containing the, the first names of um, Otis Redding. Well, let's do it in order, because um, it's going to be Julia Suala, Otis Redding, Hugh Grant, and Natasha Kaplinsky. And some of you may say, ah, that's that, I see. So if you take the initials of those first letters, they spell out John. In other words, what Shane's arranged is for everyone who sends in the correct answer to basically send John a 75th birthday card. But oh, that's lovely. However, what I find hilarious about this is firstly, for many people, Many people will, will know it's John's birthday, and I suspect they will send in a birthday card saying, Dear John, happy 75th birthday. And John will mark them all wrong <laughs> because, because they haven't obeyed the specific instructions, which is to send a birthday, blank birthday card, except for the first names. So you have to send in, you have to send in the full names. You have to send in Julia, Otis. <laughs> you and Natasha or he will mark you wrong and then I started thinking about it and I was like and I bet some people send their grid in with the birthday card and he's going to mark them wrong for that as well because it's express expressly says don't send the grid send the card not the grid and then I thought but hang on there are going to be some people out there who actually do send him a birthday card and how's he going to treat them is he going to mark them wrong on the listener if they sent him a birthday card and then a few, you know, after they solve this puzzle, they then send another card in, which will he take as the first entry? Because John is known that he doesn't let people correct their entry. So if you send in an entry and then a few days later you send in another entry, he assumes you've cheated and, and you've discussed it with a friend or something. So I think this puzzle is going to cause an absolute rigmarole. And I've spent 10 minutes telling you a story that 
that might amuse some of you. It certainly amuses me. Um, and anyway, I should probably stop now. But uh, it's 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 a fascinating insight. And what I, what I will say, I'm not sure if John will ever see this, but John, you know, I hold you in the highest regard. I can't believe the service you've performed to cruciverbalists everywhere for decades. You are an absolute machine. Um, and I, I don't hope you're lenient at all. I hope you're absolutely vicious and everyone gets it wrong. Um, because in my view, of course, um, people didn't, people never agreed with this, but in my view, the perfect listener crossword would be something that only one person could solve. But once everybody saw the answer, they would all agree it was totally fair. Um, anyway, with that, if I have got no birthdays to do today, so a reminder, we're closing in on the closing date for Patreon. So if you want a chance to win the merch, boom, there it is, the merch, um, then do uh, then do get your entries in by the 20th. Uh, let's have a look at Mountaineering by 99% Sneaky, and I will read you the rules. So we've got normal Sudoku rule supply. Uh, digits may not repeat along the marked diagonal. So this diagonal has to contain the digits 1 to 9 once each without a repeat. Um, Sorry, I was slightly tautolog tautolog tautologist there. I didn't mean to be. Um, cells that share the same relative position in three by three boxes may not contain the same digit, e.g. if there is a one in the top left cell of box one, then there may not be a one in the top left cell of any other three by three box. So that's exactly what we talked about at the start. In other words, all of those digits have to be different, just as all of these digits have to be different, etc., etc. Uh, digits in cages sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage oh okay i was suddenly worried that the instructions didn't say that digits cannot repeat within a cage which is normally what we'd expect in a killer sudoku but in fact look all of these cages are really short and none of them cross a box boundary so none of them can, can contain a repeated digit simply by their nature the very telos of these cages doesn't allow them um, to contain a repeated digit. So do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, this is very exciting actually because on our mountain here, I um, don't know quite, was this the scree? It could be. Um, seems like sort of scree on the side of the mountain there's loads of cages we can just fill in the options for so 23 can only be 6 8 9 7 can only be 1 2 4 uh, 24 can only be 7 8 9 ah okay and then then it stops does it 15 could either be 6 9 or 7 8 6 can be 1 5 or 2 4 oh no okay I thought that was going to be limited by that. It's mildly limited. I'm prepared to pencil mark it. Let's not be fussy. Um, hmm, okay. So maybe it's diagonals then. Yeah, okay. So if we look at the... Um, where does the 2 go on this diagonal? It's not in these 3. And it's not in these 3 because the 2 must be in the 7 cage. So it's in one of those 3. Same question with 4, look. Four must be up there. Don't tell me yet. Six, oh, six must be down here. So two and six are both locked into box nine. So these squares are from one, three, and five now because they can't be seven, eight, nine, and they can't be two, four, or six. Oh. Oh, nearly. Okay, one of those four cells has to be a nine. Because if we look at the combined sum of these two cages, it's 27. And you can't make 27 with four different Sudoku digits that don't include nine. Eight, seven, six, and five only add up to 26. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. A, a misspent youth. Um, so there's definitely a nine in one of those. So it's either a three nine in the 12 cage or a nine six. Hang on, let me just think about that. Three nine or nine six. Um, mm, don't really know what that's doing, to be honest. Is it, I know it's going to be the disjoints. I know it is. <laughs> I'm just trying to avoid thinking about it. Um, Mm, hang on, let me think. Come on. 
Use your brain, man. What's going on? Brain, stop being naughty. And work out something that we can do with the puzzle. So that's either six, nine, or seven, eight. No, okay, so, so it must be a disjoint somehow. So somehow or other, the disjoints are affecting it. Okay, well, how about those two then? Because these little tri triominos, let me just highlight them for a moment. Both of these triominos have got eight and nine in them. But the problem is we don't actually know where the 8s and 9s are disposed within these triominoes, do we? Sorry, I don't actually see how to use that. I thought that that... For, well, I mean, it does mean something. For example, if that was a 9, then this couldn't be a 9, which is a perplexing thing to note. But it is true. But we don't know that's a 9. 9 could be anywhere. Wherever the 9 is here, it's not in the same relative position there. Um, oh, no. I've got a horrible feeling. I'm just not going to understand this. We've got... Uh, OK, I've got something else for you. Let's have a look at that. We've got a lot of... A lot of um, cages in the top, um, the top bits, those bits. Though they are, that looks interesting, doesn't it? All of those are in the top, sort of top row, middle, and top row right of their cages. Right. So it's probably. I think it's going to be the secret, isn't it? So what we could do is we could look at these cells and we can work out the sum of these dominoes. How are we going to do that? Well, let's let's think about what I'm what I'm mulling over there. So if we take this this take the middle top position in each box, so take those squares. Oh, that's not a very good color. Take those squares. Actually, yeah, I'm not sure if I should use yellow and green. I think that might not be good for color blindness. Let's use um, let's use blue and orange. I know they're good. Um, so we know the sum of the blue squares because we know the secret. If you don't know the secret, do not worry. It's something I share with my very favorite people. And of course, if you're still watching this video and if you've sat through my anecdote about John Green, um, you 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 deserve to know the secret. <laughs> the secret is that these blue cells sum to forty five. How do I know that? Well, I know it's because they're all different. And I know what the sum of all of the different Sudoku numbers is. It's the triangular number for 9, i.e. it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. That's 45. So I know that those add up to 45. And therefore, the analogy would be that those cells also sum up to 45. In other words, if we look at every top domino including those blue ones there, I should get 90, shouldn't I, as the sum? Because that's two lots of 45. Now, what do we actually get? We get 23, 29, 39, 51, 66 is what we get. So that means these squares have to add up to 24 in order to get to 90 overall. Now, is that difficult? 24. It looks like it's going to be... Well, no, the problem is this could have massive numbers in it. These numbers can't be big and these numbers can't be big because 9 and 8 and locked out of both of them. So the maximum that could be would be 7, 5. The maximum that could be would be 3, 5. That's 12, that's 20. How much do we have to get to 24? So that's, ah, oh, <laughs> that's easy. Uh, that's not it then. Oh, sorry. I thought that was going to be it. That was totally and utterly clear to me when I noticed that all of these were in the top, top right-hand corner of the boxes. These add up to 24. Okay, let's just think, is there a reason that we can't max out any of these numbers? 
because they are quite low. Why can't this be an 8-9 pair? Imagine if that can't be an 8-9. No, even if it couldn't be an 8-9 pair, that could be 7-5. I suppose that then couldn't... Well, that could also be 7-5. That would get us to 24, and that's, that's enough, isn't it? Then we don't need to include 5 there at all. That could be 1-3. And that would blow the total open. So there, so even if even if there is no nine eight there, we don't seem to pick upon a restriction. So it's right, okay. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be some other way of using the disjoint. So it must be these as well then. Let's just highlight those in another color. Um, where else have we got profound overlap? Well, there is a small overlap between those two. That one seems to be completely isolated. There's no... Oh, no, that no, that's... No, actually, these three. Okay. Sorry. That's weird. I could see that those two were the same. That one didn't seem to... In my brain, it didn't seem to be in the same position. And yet it is, clearly. Let's highlight those in a different colour. So these are all... The overlapping sets. All of the cages in the puzzle do overlap with another cage. No, well, all of them actually overlap with at least two other cages. Ah. Ah, okay. I don't. I haven't got this yet, but I have. I've now seen something. Um, there's some. There's some seti thing going on here. I think because if we look at the diagonal here, we know what that sums to. We've got these given digits as well. I know what these sum to. Oh no, I think I've just, I think I've just managed to prove that two equals two actually. No, I, maybe I'm wrong about this. I, um I thought that I know what these add up to. Yeah, I am just proving two equals two, aren't I? Because I was thinking I could do these three boxes. Which must sum up to 135. Deduct out that diagonal. That gets me to, now I need 90, don't I, in these cells. But I already know that these add up to 24, 34, 36. Which implies these add up to 54. But I already knew what these added up to. Do they actually add up to, they do add up to 54 as well. So all I am doing is proving that 2 equals 2. Ah! <laughs> the puzzle that made Simon prove that 2 equals 2. Um, oh, probably I don't know what to do. What is it? It's going to be... Sorry, sorry, I realise I've stopped, I've stopped talking. Um, I didn't mean to. Okay, it's, no, it's, it's something to do with the digits, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think it is something to do with the digits. Mm, actually, I'm not sure now. I'm trying to work out if I if I can work out. Can I work out the digits that have to go in orange using set? I can't I can't see it. I'm just going. I'm just going to have to highlight this. Sorry. Um, let's highlight that. So, I feel like there's something going on between the, 
Let's change the blue ones to orange a minute. Orange is Orange is two sets of the digits one to nine. Yeah, okay, so what what we do is, let me think about this. I think I've got to get rid of a lot of my coloring here. Um, let me just undo the coloring. I want to highlight orange again, which is which is the, these positions. So if I do those, and then I do this as well in orange, now, Yeah, yes, I can. So, I, yes, this is good. This is good because now, okay, so that's these are orange digits. And these orange digits, we definitely know that's three sets of the digits one to nine because we've got these positions here, which we know are two sets of the digits one to nine, and the leading diagonal, which is a third set of the digits one to nine. So, but I can get another three different sets of the digits one to nine by doing this. That is also three digits, three sets of digits, one to nine. Have I got, I have got them, hang on. So let's imagine, so my blue, my blue digits here, I'm gonna put them on Scrabble tiles, let me show you. Can you see, that's a three. So imagine, imagine for all of those 27 digits that are blue, I write, I've got 27 Scrabble tiles in here and I put them in a blue bag. Then what have I got in my orange bag? Well, I've all got exactly the same digits, haven't I? Because I've got 27 orange tiles in this one, corresponding to the orange things I've shaded. Um, and yeah, you can see there's an eight on that one. They are real. Um, they may not be exactly 27, but let's imagine there are. So these bags at the moment have the same things in them. But here, what we can do if, if imagine I took that, whatever that digit is, or whatever that tile is, I'm taking it out of both bags because it's in both bags at the moment, isn't it? Whatever that digit happens to be, clearly it's in the blue bag and in the orange bag. So I'm going to find it and take it out of both bags. And I can do that for all of these cells that have two colors in them. Boom, 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 boom. Well, then we're left with a whole load of tiles in blue and a whole load of tiles in orange, but because I started off with the same thing in the blue and orange bag and I took the same thing out every time. I took exactly the same tile out of both bags each time I took one of those um, bicolored cells out. Then we know that at this point in the puzzle, the orange tiles and the blue tiles are still identical. And that means Well, that means, I'm not sure if this is actually going to work, is it? Four. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. How do you make that 12 cage work then? Because I'm only allowed to use blue, blue digits to make the 12 cage work. So I can't put six in it. And I think the only other low digit I've got which will work, I haven't got five. Five doesn't, I've not got five or three, so I have to use four. This is it. Right, so now, <laughs> this is very clever actually. So now I've got a four, I have to put four in my orange cage. And therefore, I've equated, I've equated one of the eights in blue and one of the fours in blue, there are actually two fours in blue, with this this cage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to delete this cage uh, from orange and we're going to delete four and one of the eights from blue. <laughs> and let's see if we could keep this going because I don't think it's going to work for the 15 cage because we've still got six, nine left and we've still got seven, eight left. So we, we can't do this one. Um, uh, no, it doesn't work here either. 13 doesn't work because we've still got a 4 left. So we can still do 4, 9 and we can still do 6, 7. The 6 cage. Well, the 6 cage is better. 
that hasn't yes okay because we haven't got a five in blue we can't make this one five so this is two four and we're going to get digits from that because of the given four so we get four and two in orange now i'm going to delete those from there and i'm going to delete well i'm going to delete the two and the four from there so this this only corresponds now to the digit one four has to be in one of those squares um right no this is great because now i've used up both my fours in in blue effectively so i can't put four again in orange here i'm going to have to use the six so all right i've got to use one of the sixes in in the 13 cage with the seven down here this is brilliant this is brilliant because now i've got to uncolor this but the, the point of this is if i get rid of seven because I've had to hypothecate it to the 13 cage, I can't now put um, I can't now put seven in, in this orange as well because I've got no sevens left in blue. So this has to be six, nine. And again, I know the order. That's got to be six, that's got to be nine. So we can get rid of nine. Actually, that one is perfect. We can get rid of all of that because that is a six, nine pair. So then we uncolor this. Ah, no, 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 go back. Six nine. I just want to uncolor you. Um, okay, so now we've got left. Oh, we've got two ten. Oh no, <laughs> this is beautiful. We've got two ten cages left, but we know how we're going to fill them because we've got a two and a one left in blue, and an eight and a nine left in blue. But that can't be a two eight pair because there's a two here. So this has to be a one nine pair, um, which means that we get rid of the one. We get rid of the nine and we're just left with two and eight which must go in that one isn't that gorgeous what a gorgeous idea um okay so let's now uncolor the grid again uh let's do that because we used up everything now i'm going to reinstate all my pencil marks again because i'm going to probably need them uh that's got to be seven nine and now Well, now what do we do? We have we've got further than we had than we got before because we have yes yes that that's not two <laughs> because if that was two it would clash with that two there which is a quite ludicrous thing to say but it is true because they are both in the top right position of their box so that has to be two that has to be eight and don't tell me yeah look at this this is sick that eight now sees that one so that's eight that's four um okay that i thought that might go further but it doesn't i don't think two is in one of those squares by sudoku we've got to try and keep an eye on this disjoint malarkey that's not six anymore um okay we well we have got to try and keep an eye on it but i don't think we i don't think it's doing anything now famous last words i said oh no no <laughs> it is the nine this is very hard to see for me that nine sees that one so that's got to be a one one and nine go in that means that's not nine look so nine is here it's in one of those two which means nine is down here i see the six here is oh, i'm so bad at this that's seven that's six six seems to have to be on the diagonal down here so that's a six two has to be on the diagonal down so that's a two so this square is actually we don't know do we one three or five apparently bother oh, come no i don't know if i can limit that at all how peculiar seven maybe so seven is not there so seven is in this domino it's a bit like the nine over that side so seven is in this domino this eight cage now is not two six so it's either one seven or three five somehow i put in the wrong numbers there <laughs> um oh dear uh 
Yeah, so what you... Let's see, if that was 8, that would have to be 9 by the disjoint logic. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. I've got no idea. 4 goes into those squares. 6 is in one of these three. But how are we going to actually exploit the disjoints in these lower regions? They don't, they don't look like they work to me. But maybe that's because I'm not understood. Oh, hang on, here's a point. 8 and 9. Where are 8 and 9 on the negative diagonal? They have to be in these squares. Oh, that's it. There you go. There's an 8, 9 pair looking at that square. So this is an 8, 9 pair. Oh, can we do any better than that? If this is an 8, 9 pair, what have we not put in? 3, 5, so this is a 3, 5, 7 triple in this box. So there's some sort of correspondence between those squares and those squares. Um, I don't see how to use that. Oh, I can use the 9 here. So that's, oh, hang on, that's 9, that's 8. Right, so 8 is in one of these squares by Sudoku. 9 is in one of those squares. 9 is in one of these squares. But, I don't know. Uh, what about, what about 6 in this row? Oh, that's nearly good. 6 here would do some damage, wouldn't it? Can six be actually look no six is probably more like six is in one of those two I've just noticed by Sudoku I think we're just going to have to plug away with our Sudoku and hope that the hope we spot things that from the disjoint that oh that look that's not two yeah there is more Sudoku we can do so this two over here which means there's a two in one of these squares we've got lots of even numbers down here Where is 7 in this row? Is there... That would be a useful 7 because that would fix this 8 cage. I mean, I've been assuming there's not much I can do with these. I mean, that cage isn't restricted, is it? It can't be 1, 8. But it could still be 2, 7, 3, 6 or 4, 5. I think. That one. I suppose this one can't be 3 8 or 4 7 so this is 5 6 which would have to be in one order 6 5 like that or it's 2 9 ah oh that's that's it look th there's a 9 here looking at this cage this is 5 6 now don't tell well that's that is great so now that's 6 and this is an 8 9 pair so can we maybe we can do this now yes that's 2, 7. It can't be 4, 5, 3, 6, or 1, 8. So that's 2, 7. That's coming out of absolutely nowhere. And that, well, and that does where 7 goes in row 7, because it can't go there anymore. So that is 7, which does the 8 cage, or makes it 3, 5. Um, this digit is 1 or 3, I think. So there's definitely a 5 there, which means there's no 5 in the corner. So we could be getting a 3 in the corner. What else do we need in this column? We need 1, 3 and 4. Well, that's a, th that's a naked single, I think. This square here. Let's just double check that. 1, 3, 4. 1 and 4. Yeah, that looks, that looks right. So that's 3. That's 1. Now we, oh, we get a 1 in the corner. Oh dear. That, that was a short-lived hope, wasn't it? But the one now in this box has to be there because it can't repeat on the diagonal, which is its only other option. Uh, this square here is the four in the column. Right, and we've not placed three, five, and seven on the diagonal. So that is, these are from three, five, and seven. And <laughs> we don't know anything about them. Um... And that squares, well, that squares three or five. It can't be seven because of this one. So seven is on the diagonal here, which means seven is not there, which means seven is in this domino, which means this square is probably restricted. Um, 
it's not actually no look there's no three in here so we could have done that a different way i just didn't see it so that puts three on the diagonal there which means that that's three in box number one we get the five seven on the diagonal now those squares are a four nine pair come on you rotten thing you rotten old no 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 four nine can't be right because i've got a four here oh sorry it's because i was looking at these pencil marks and ignoring the fact that i had a four here which takes four out of that square these are a five nine pair so i can get that digit i think i might be wrong about this but if we look at the top left cells we've got most of them um, we have not put a six into the top left cell so that has to be six I don't believe I've just done it that way. I don't believe it. That's just so embarrassing. Look, I've, I've done this row apart from that digit and I did it by the dis disjoint. There is something very, very badly wrong with me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, but <laughs> there's a five here. Okay, so that's a nine. That's a five. That's probably not the order I wanted that in actually. I'd rather have had the nine here because it would have given me this digit. Okay, so where is the natural place? Ah, two is there apparently, just using my pencil marks. How do we do this then? Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, seven is can't be there or it would repeat in its disjoint. So that's five, that's seven. And that's the same here. That's now got to be three and that's got to be five using the disjoint. So five is in one of these two squares now. <laughs> Let's scan right now. I don't think we, well, no, I don't think we do have five in a useful place there. Okay. Oh, I don't know then. Let's try. That's not a six. I can see that in this box. Two, three, seven, and nine? Yeah, okay, so there are a two, three pair. So these must be a seven, nine pair. That feels like it's possibly of relevance. Yeah, <laughs> that two sees that one. So that's got to be three. That's got to be two. So that's got to be two, four, eight, one, using our pencil marks to excess. That's now one. So this is a two, four pair. Now let's check right hand bottoms. Um, no, I don't think we do have any twos in them, do we? Do we have any fours or seven? Yeah, oh no, we don't. No, I don't think we do. But we can pencil mark these squares. They've got to be one. Oh, they've got to be six and one. So we can do that. Six and one go in. So one is over here. One is in one of these two. But no, <laughs> it's not helpful. Uh, Maverick's just taken off. I can hear. Ah, seven, nine here. So this is five. This is seven. That's done the diagonal. Um, what about those squares then? There are six, eight pair, are they? So six and eight have to go in using this six. This has got to be a four, five pair. It doesn't seem to be resolved. Maybe, not, I'm not sure. Uh, these two squares are three and seven, which we can do. That's good, seven and three. So these have got to be five and four five here so that's five that's four that's four that's one um we've not put three eight nine into this box i can see we can do some eliminations there that's not three um okay so where how's the disjoint playing out with this three eight nine triple there you go that one is an eight so that's got to be a nine and there that gets us a little bit further we get a three oh look that's not nine now although we've still got two pencil marks less left for nines three eight at the bottom so we just need a three or an eight somewhere to, there there <laughs> it's so silly that's three that's eight um that didn't do this okay so these squares down here have got to be three and seven somehow that's not resolved apparently that seems very very odd to me okay there's a three in that corner of that box so that can't be a three so that's got to be five that's got to be three 
Oh, and the four here sees that one. So that's five, that's four, that's four, that's two, that's two, that's seven. That's seven, that's three. Okay, so now we, we've got to put one into one of those, which must be there. We've not put five into that row. This is an eight, nine pair. And uh, okay, I don't, I th maybe this is going to resolve it because I don't see how else we're going to do it. That's going to have to be an eight. That's going to have to be a nine. Oh, look, that's a, that is a deadly pattern, but it's resolved because of the weird disjoint thingies. And this can't be nine or it would repeat there. So that's got to be eight, nine. That means this is eight. Oh, no. Uh, uh, now I've got another deadly pattern, but presumably... Yeah, so that seven sees that one. So that's got to be nine, nine, seven, seven. What a brilliant puzzle. What a brilliant puzzle that is. That is quality. Uh, I love that. 99% sneaky. That's really unusual. And for some reason, I, well, I know I wasn't brilliant at the disjoint scanning, but it wasn't quite as bad as I sometimes am. And um, the break in was very interesting and very strange. You sort of, but you could you could sort of get at it because it was apparent early that you couldn't do anything without noticing that several of the cages were in exactly the same positions and therefore the disjoint had to be relevant. It's really, that's a clever puzzle. Very much enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on with it. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.